There is a big giant price differential between what we saw on the inverter for the Model 3 and what we see now on the Model Y. Tesla has done something remarkably different and that is to package the whole thing together and get the minimum number of components that, uh, that are necessary in order to create um, their, their power and their power distribution. Tesla is somebody that everybody should watch. Hey, I'm Steven and this is Solving the Money Problem. If you're new, welcome. If you're not, Welcome back, Engineering Nerds Unite. Once again, going down the rabbit hole with the expert of experts, Sandy Munro. In today's video, we're taking a super close look at specific costs, weight, and dimensions of Tesla's inverters used in the Model 3 and also Model Y, and comparing those and contrasting them to what Sandy Munro believes to be the second and third best inverter out of all the electric vehicles he's personally torn down. This will illustrate just how far Tesla are ahead of number two and three. And fair warning, we will be getting down into the weeds in this video, that's the entire point. This video is to give you guys some insight. One way of looking, okay, just this one particular component inside Tesla's vehicle compared to everything else. What are they doing different? What are they doing better? Are they doing anything worse? We can then use this knowledge to infer other things about other components within each of Tesla's vehicles and other elements of their business and then realize, holy shit, they really have won the decade. So, let's get into the video. And by the way, since I know there's a lot of crypto lovers watching and people who like free stuff, it's your lucky day. For a limited time, you can get up to $250 in free crypto bonuses when funding a new account on BlockFi where you can use cryptocurrency to earn interest, borrow cash, and buy or sell crypto. If you want your free crypto, use the link in the description. It also helps out the channel. And if you'd like up to two free stocks, check out the link in the description to Weeble. If you open a new account, you'll get one free stock valued up to $250 just for opening an account. And if you fund your account with $100, you'll get a second free stock valued up to $1,600. Unless you don't like free stocks, that is. And if you're in Australia, the UK, or New Zealand, you can get a free stock with stake also using the link in the description. Let's get back to it. So let's look at the, uh, the inverters themselves. Now, I will tell you that things have changed since we've uh, done these, um, these analysis and costing especially because the, uh, the components, uh, the manufacturing strategies, lots of different things um, have changed those, uh, those numbers quite a bit. So if we look at the 2018 number for the Tesla Model 3, you can see that it was $810.54. That's USD. The 2020 Model Y inverter, which was costed using new values, not 2018 values, came in at a different number. That number is 522, and there's virtually no difference between, well, there is some slight differences, but really and truly, when it comes to the base model product, there's very little difference between the Model 3 inverter and the Model Y inverter. Now, if you're a Tesla stock investor, this information should give you a massive, raging insight into how far ahead Tesla is and how much progress they're making from generation to generation. We heard there, the Model 3 inverter about $820, the Model Y inverter practically the same function, features and performance, now $522, a 35% reduction in cost between one generation to the next. And remember, Tesla continues to iterate and improve constantly. This is one example of when Tesla applies their massive engineering brains to a problem, these are the kind of improvements we see and it never ends. And it's not just in one area of their vehicles or their products, it's everywhere, even including their manufacturing techniques. But there is a big giant price differential between what we saw on the inverter for the Model 3 and what we see now on the Model Y. So let's look at the cost. So. Let's use the today cost of 522 for the um, for the 2020 uh, version of that uh, that inverter. Let's look at uh, the, the the Nissan Leaf, and what we're looking here at is uh, 468. That's in U.S. dollars. And then um, when we get to the 2019 Jaguar I-Pace, we're looking at a, what we call the triple nickel of 555 dollars. Then we look down a little bit, we're looking at the voltage, and uh, now we're looking at, um, uh, that this is all in DC, 530, 540, sorry, 450, 500, and then the dimensions. Now, this is a little bit different for the, um, uh, than what you, you'd really think. So, um, I'm gonna go through these dimensions and then show you what, what the changes might be. So these are called coffin dimensions. So that's the box that you could put it in. And so we're looking at uh, the uh, we're looking at the uh, Model Three at um, 
basically 370 by 278 by 122. And then you look at the, uh, the Nissan Leaf, and you're looking at 386 by 386 by 223. And then we get to the Jaguar I-Pace, and it's 407 by 272, and, um, and then 83. You have to remember that this is the coffin dimension. So I've actually taken the time to calculate the total coffin dimension for each of these inverters. This isn't a perfect analogy. It's not a perfect representation of who's better in terms of engineering because these coffin dimensions include protrusions. You know, if you've got something that's paper thin, but it has one gigantic protrusion on one end, you're going to have a massive coffin dimension, even though a lot of that space inside the internal volume is not actually taken up. This is just a really rough guide. But even so, the volume of the Tesla inverter comes in around 12 and a half million cubic millimeters versus the Nissan Leaf inverter at over 33 million cubic millimeters and the Jaguar inverter, the coffin dimensions for that, just over 9 million cubic millimeters. So keep in mind, this isn't a perfect example of what's better or what's worse, but it's useful information when combined with the cost and the weight and some of the other figures. The parts and fasteners, um, we're looking at um, 1,275 parts. That includes all the bits and pieces for the circuit boards and 44 fasteners. When we look at the Nissan, we're looking at 1,287 with about 56 fasteners. And then we get to the Jaguar I-Pace, and they win, uh, with 2,185, um, with 106 fasteners. Um, with Monroe, we try our best to try and reduce the number of components as, as much as we can. And if possible, we want to try and get rid of uh, fasteners in, entirely. So uh, the, the Jaguar kind of uh, doesn't win the, the battle when it comes to that. If we look at the weight, uh, we're looking at, uh, in kilograms, uh, 4.81 kilograms for the, uh, for the Tesla, 11.15 for the ne Nissan LEAF, and, um, and 8.23 for the Jaguar. Now, in an electric vehicle, weight is, uh, is a big determining factor as to how much range you're going to get. So, seeing a differential where it's uh, almost triple, um, is, a, is a kind of a bad thing for the folks at uh, the Nissan. And that's kind of like what we try and look at. As we're determining who's got the best whatever, um, we look at weight, number of parts, we look at the coffin dimensions, and obviously we're going to be looking at the, uh, the cost of the product. So despite the fact that the cost of these three inverters is pretty close, let's say within about 10% of one another, there is enormous variation in the weight, which is an incredibly important aspect of an electric vehicle. The more mass you have to lug around, the less range you get for each kilowatt hour of battery. So this is really important. We can see this is a great illustration of how far ahead Tesla's engineers are. The Tesla Model 3 slash Y inverter weighing in at 4.81 kilograms versus the Nissan Leaf inverter, almost 300% heavier at about 11.15 kilograms, and the Jaguar I-Pace inverter over eight kilograms, about double that of Tesla's inverter. This is really incredible and speaks volumes. For about a 10% variation in cost, we're seeing a two to 300% difference in the actual weight of these inverters. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a look at the, uh, the Tesla Model 3 um, inverter. And that would be this product right here, minus the, um, the closeout, for the cooling. So the closeout for the cooling is going to go on here. So where is this thing uh, located and why is it so thin? So you can see here that the um, at the uh, extreme left hand side you can see in that red block where the um, where the inverter gearbox and motor is located. The inverter in green you'll see doesn't have a top cap. Um, one of the reasons that we like the Tesla is because they've done a good job at, uh, at making the product use the least amount of uh, componentry. Where you'll see when we get to the, um, when we get to the, uh, the Nissan Leaf and the Jaguar I-Pace, they've got covers and they mount it in separate areas and then have wires going to different spots. Tesla has done something remarkably different and that is to package the whole thing together and get the minimum number of components that, uh, that are necessary in order to create um, their, their power and their power distribution. So to translate there, 
Unlike Tesla, Nissan and Jaguar have designed an absolute clusterfuck with unnecessary mounts, housings and wires all over the place versus Tesla who have done something, to quote Sandy, remarkably different by deleting loads of parts and using the absolute minimum number of components to get the job done. Again, big brain engineers, deleting parts and processes, running circles around the competition, everything so far we've looked at in terms of these inverters just shows how far ahead Tesla are in terms of their engineering ability. Our friends over here at Tesla, um, they did a DIY uh, type of uh, engineering. They, they went directly in and built their own, uh, their own system. Um, Tesla is notorious for vertical integration, especially when it comes to what they classify as profound knowledge. Okay, so let's look at one other last, uh, that's little thing that, that kind of um, is uh, something that we think you should be looking at. Um, Right here, you've got the, uh, the Nissan um, uh, bleed resistors. Um, if, we, if we look at this, you're looking at an extra part with a couple of leads that have to be attached. If we look at what Tesla's come up with, um, it's quite a bit more integrated. There's the bleed resistors there, underneath the, uh, the little uh, sponge, if you like, that, uh, that basically protects them and wicks away heat. This. Um, this is kind of one of the things that, that we continuously look for whenever we're doing analysis. Who's doing the best job uh, at whatever that we're trying to examine? It doesn't matter to us whether you're looking at a washing machine or an airplane or a jet engine or, or, a, or a Tesla Model 3 versus a Nissan versus, versus a Jaguar. Our takeaway is always who's done the best job? What, what, uh, what the real takeaway is integration. How much did the customer or the company that we're working with, how much integration did they do? How many parts did they eliminate? When we look at, uh, when we look at integration, we're also looking at weight reduction. Who came in at the lightest weight? Weight costs money. Some people pay up to, if, actually if you're in an airplane, it's 600 bucks a pound to, uh, to, uh, to get rid of weight. They'll pay that much to get rid of weight. If you're looking at a car, around $5 a pound. That, that type of stuff really and truly makes a big difference in your efficiency, in your travel times, in your length of travel. Everything is associated with weight. And then the last one is cost. And we know that uh, the Tesla inverter costs a little bit more than the Jaguar, but there's other things that are stuck inside their inverter that we can't really talk about because they're not inside of, uh, they're not inside of the, uh, the other two uh, competitors. So if I have to pick and talk about which things or which, which product had the best, uh, uh, the best design, um, I'm going to have to go with Tesla. Now people think I, I get paid by Tesla, but Tesla's never been a customer. So um, Tesla is not getting, uh, is not paying my, 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 my fee. But Tesla is somebody that everybody should watch. What a great place to wrap up here. Under the leadership of Elon Musk, Tesla's big brain engineers are proving themselves to be among the most creative and resourceful of any on planet Earth. Let me know in the comments below if you guys are enjoying these engineering deep dives. I know I lose a few people here sometimes. I don't want to get too down in the weeds and the details, but man, this stuff just gives you so much insight into the company and the future. This is the kind of stuff that Tesla stock investors who really want to understand the company should be paying attention to. So let me know if you guys are enjoying these videos. I'm Stephen Mark Ryan. This is Solving the Money Problem, and I love you all. And don't forget, if you'd like up to $250 in free crypto bonuses with BlockFi, use the link in the description. You can also get two free stocks with Weeble and a free stock with Stake also linked in the description. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And of course, if you have any ideas for future videos, let me know. I read all your comments. P.S. If you're still watching, you're awesome. If you'd like early access, exclusive videos, regular Q&As, our private Discord server and more, consider supporting the channel at patreon.com slash solving the money problem so I can keep creating content for you guys. There's a link in the description. You can now also become a member of the channel for some exclusive perks. To learn more, click the join button next to subscribe. And don't don't forget to check out our merch store. Either way, the best form of support is you being here and watching, so thanks again.